Imagine if you had to survive 100 days on one chunk. This single chunk contains every biome possible, and the lower you go, the harder it gets to survive. Will I be able to discover all the biomes in this one single chunk? What builds and overpowered farms will I be able to create? And will I be able to use the resources from this chunk to defeat the Ender Dragon? Well, it's time to find out. Here we go, it's day one and we are all alone on this one chunk. And if we take a look down here, there's so much more for us to explore. But for now, let's go ahead and chop down this tree just like that. And now let's hope we get saplings. <gasps> yes, there we go. All right, perfect. Let's plant this back down, make a crafting table. And using this crafting table, let's make a pickaxe and also a wooden hoe. And using this hoe, we can make some farmland. Then we can try and get some seeds just like this. And now we can plant these wheat seeds to start growing some food. But now I think it's time to dig down into this one chunk so we can upgrade our wooden tools into stone tools. So let's just mine up some cobblestone. And would you take a look at that? We already have some coal as well. Anyway, let's make some stone tools. I'm also going to make some torches so we can light up this one chunk to stop mobs from spawning. All right, it's coming up to night time. So I think it's the perfect time to strip mine around to try and find some iron. Here we go, we finally found our first pieces of iron. And we found even more, so now in total we have ourselves 23 pieces of iron. So let's head back up to the surface, make ourselves a furnace, and let's start smelting up this iron. While we wait for the iron to smelt, let's chop down this tree and try to get even more saplings. Alright, there we go. We have one more leaf, will it drop a sapling is the question. Anyway though, our iron is all smelted, so let's make an iron pickaxe and an iron shovel. Now, the next thing I want to do is build these cows a place to live. Because first things first, they keep on getting in my way. And secondly, I keep getting scared that they're going to fall off the edge and I'm going to lose them. So let's just go ahead and spend the next few days chopping down some trees. I may have got a little bit too carried away with chopping down trees, but that's fine because I can go ahead and use some of this wood to make my one chunk look a little bit better. And I'm also going to go ahead and make a bridge. And well, on the other side of this bridge, I'm going to build a new area. And on top of this new space, I'm going to construct the cow's brand new home. All right, guys, follow me. Let's open these and put them inside. And now they're in the barn, let's breed them together and start a cow farm. Because the only thing I've been able to eat is literally bread, which isn't really that great. But soon I'll be able to eat these guys. Now that I've built this, I want to start exploring more of the one chunk. So I'm just going to make a double chest and store a bunch of my items. Now, I don't actually know how dangerous things are going to get down there, but I do want to be on the safe side. So for that reason, I'm going to make an iron sword and also a shield. And I know this is probably a huge waste of my iron, but just to be on the safe side, let's make an iron chest plate. All right, let's go ahead and explore more of this one chunk. Let's just head underground and start mining and see what happens. Okay, guys, I think we found the next biome. So it seems to be a desert biome and there is just a ton of mobs down there. Is it going to be safe for me to go down there. I think I have no choice but to just jump straight down. So you know what? I'm probably going to die, but let's do it. But quickly before we do, I want to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Honkai Impact 3rd. Honkai Impact 3rd is an epic anime styled action role playing game that has some insane combat and an awesome art style. Their brand new update has just released, bringing in more characters, themed events, and even three new outfits. The new character that they have added is an epic swordswoman. She can generate flying swords to strike enemies, trapping them in the array, and she can even summon a giant sword from the skies to dominate any anyone in her way. There's also the new Midnight Chronicle event, which not only introduces a brand new co-op mode experience, but it also allows you to get your hands on this new epic outfit that looks pretty good if I do say so myself. And talking of outfits, a ton of new ones have just been added into this new update, some of which include this mesmerizing blue outfit and also this cool looking outfit. Onkai Impact have even added an art collection, which you can obtain for completely free. The game is available on Epic, so make sure to get it there and log in to receive bonus rewards. And you can even download it using the link in my description and if you redeem the gift code, you'll get 30 crystals, 2,888 asteroids, and a Hersha trial card for free. Thanks to Honkai Impact 3 for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. Come on, come on, come on! Okay, the creepers exploded. Let's just take out the zombie and the spider. Come on. Yes, there we go. Okay, so it seems we have like a desert village farm. Oh, I didn't even realize it has potatoes and carrots. All right, I'm taking all of this because this is going to be great for food. So before I quickly go and explore any more of the chunk, it's probably a good idea for me to plant all these carrots down and also these potatoes. I'm definitely going to have to expand this farm later. Let's also quickly make a bucket, fill it with some water. And using this bucket, I can take no fall damage dropping into new biomes. Anyway, let's continue mining down to see what else we can find in this one chunk. All right. We're getting pretty low into the desert biome, so we should see something soon. <gasps> Ooh, okay. I don't know why, but I find it so weird looking at an ice spikes biome that's only one chunk big. Anyway, though, at least this ice spikes biome doesn't have as many mobs as the desert biome did. Let's hope the stray doesn't hit us, because if it does, we get slowness. Oh, yes. Shoot the creeper. No. 
Okay, it's just the stray left and oh, we're on four hearts. And goodbye. I have no idea how I almost just died right there. Anyway, let's eat so we can get some health back. And it seems like there's a cave under here. I guess let's go ahead and find out. And yep, it's a cave and oh, diamonds. How did I not even see these things? Let's go. Okay, please be more than one diamond though. I mean, come on. It, it can't just be one, right? I, I, I think it is literally just one diamond. You know what though? It's fine because there's way more iron down here. Also some copper, some gold, and finally some coal. You've got to be kidding me. Anyway, let's keep on mining downwards. All right, we found another cave. Okay, there's a lot of skeletons for some reason. Okay, hold on a second. No, no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I don't know if you guys can see that, but for some reason there is so many skeletons. So I have a feeling that there's got to be some type of spawner in here somewhere. Like, there's no way this many skeletons spawning is normal. I knew it. That has to be where all of the skeletons are coming from, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and run at the spawner to block it off. So let's break this block and let's make a run for it. Let's go, let's go. Oh no, bad idea, bad idea. No, the skeletons. <sighs> block it off. <sighs> Oh my goodness. I have two and a half hearts and zero food. I think the best idea right now is to probably head home and get some more food. And let's also craft some bone meal just to speed up the process. The food's cooked, so let's head back down to the mob spawner. Let's uh, also be very careful walking back down the staircase because one wrong move and it's uh, all over. All right, we're back down in the cave and the mob spawner is right here. And if I was correct, it should be a skeleton spawner. And yes, it is. I'm definitely going to turn this into an XP farm later. Anyway, let's check what's inside of these chests. So we have some iron, we have some wheat and a saddle. And what about this one? We have have some gold, some iron horse armor, and some string. Oh, we can actually make a bow with this. And right next to the mob spawner is even more diamonds. I don't mind if I do. Okay, it's more than one this time. We have two, and <gasps> we have stumbled across, I think this is a village. I guess let's head down here. Yes, it's a village biome, and there's, <gasps> there's actual villagers here. This is perfect, because what I can do is transport these villagers back up to the top, and we'll be able to turn them into librarians to get things like mending books and just a bunch of other OP enchants. For now, though, I hope the villagers don't mind me stealing all of their hay bales. I also really need a bed, because I don't have one yet. And there's a chest over here with oh, another diamond and some iron. Okay, we'll worry about bringing these villagers back up to the top later because what I need to do right now is get myself full iron armor because as you guys saw from the ice spikes biome, the lower we go down in the one chunk, the harder it gets. So the chances are if we go any lower in the one chunk, we're probably going to end up dying if we don't get any more armor. So let's just quickly head back up into this cave to get the final pieces of iron that we need for a full set of iron armor. So let's go around and mine all of the iron that we can find. So I ended up spending the entire of day 12 pretty much mining for iron, and I found a bunch. Now, while we wait for this iron to smell, I have a little bit of clearing up to do on the one chunk. So I think I'm going to make a separate area for a tree farm, and another separate area for my food farm. And whilst we're at it, we may as well build another expansion for a house that can hold my crafting table and furnace, and also have an area for a storage room, because I'm kind of running out of space in this one chest. So let's expand our one chunk. The first thing I decided to do to expand my one chunk was go down to the village and collect up a bunch of dirt. And using this dirt, I could begin making the new expansions onto the one chunk. The first thing I began constructing was a simple tree farm extension. And once that was complete, I decided to make another bridge into a new area that would be used for my food farm. This farm will contain things like carrots, potatoes, and wheat. And well, once I was done building the tree farm and also the food farm, I began by collecting resources that I would need to use to build my house. I spent some time obtaining things like stone for stone brick, oak logs, and I also took a trip down to the desert biome so that I could get some sand for glass. And by day 24, I had all of the resources necessary to begin building my house. So from days 25 to 29, that's exactly what I did. There we go, the house is finished. So we can finally take out all of our iron and begin moving everything over to our new house. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my bed right here and put a crafting table right next to it. And then on the other side, I'm gonna place down a bunch of furnaces. And now let's head up top and place down an absolute ton of double chests. Now the final thing we have to move over is all of our storage. All right, here we go. So all of the storage is now moved over. So we can now go ahead and use all of the iron that we mined earlier to make a full set of iron armor. I definitely feel like we're prepared enough to go and explore more of the one chunk. But really quickly before we do, all of the days that I spent building all of this, I was constantly breeding my cows together. And yeah, there is, there is a lot of cows in there. I mean, just listen to how loud it is. Anyway, at least we can stop eating baked potatoes and begin eating steak.
much better. Also, something else I just remembered that I can do is actually get some string that I found earlier to make a bow and arrow. Now, I only have 26 arrows, so I'll definitely have to enchant this bow later and try and get infinity. But now let's go back to exploring the one chunk. Now, I'm hoping because we're getting lower and lower down into the chunk, we're going to start finding more valuables like diamonds, lapis, and maybe even some gold. And I do kind of want to get my hands on full diamond armor and tools, so let's hope that we can find some diamonds. Okay, so now it's time to find out what's under this village. Oh yeah, I kind of took all of the dirt from this village to expand my one chunk up there, so uh, I do apologize about that, villagers. Anyway, let's just start digging down. What has the one chunk got in store for us next? And it is a Badlands biome, and these mobs are gonna be a problem. It is quite cool that we found a Badlands biome, because I'm pretty sure this is like one of the rarest biomes in the game, but with that side, I don't know how I'm gonna get rid of all of these with just 26 arrows. All right, let's just target the creeper first. All right, I've gotten rid of all of the creepers, so I'm gonna jump down and hopefully not get poisoned by those spiders. So let's go, and let's just build around all of this so that nothing can get us, and I actually am forgetting that spiders can climb things, so let's just quickly take this out. Come on! Okay, that was close. Where's the other cave spider? I know there was one more. Oh, wait, hold on. That is a lot of zombies. All right, let's hit you guys off. And I think that is all of the mobs, right? Okay, it is. Let's head down and see what is inside of this Badlands biome. Now, there is a mine shaft, so let's go and look inside. And oh, okay. This would explain why there's cave spiders. Now, I actually have a genius idea. I'm going to pick up all of these rails because I can use them to transport the villagers from their village all the way to the surface where my base is. Anyway, I'm having quite a lot of fun exploring the one chunk, so let's just go down even further. I just really hope that we can find some more diamonds. All right, by the looks of things, it seems we've ran into a spruce biome. So let's jump down. All right, let's check out what's in this village. So we have a smoker and a chest with some obsidian, which is going to be perfect for an enchantment table. And how could I forget we can finally get our hands on a spruce sapling, which means we can stop building out of oak because all of the builds I've built so far are made out of oak. So it's going to be really nice to mix things up with some spruce. All right, now let's see what's down here. Oh, we could probably turn this lava into obsidian, which means we can go to the nether. And wait a second, talking of the nether, I wonder if that's going to be made out of one chunk as well. Anyway, let's turn all of this into obsidian. Ah, but the only problem is I don't have a diamond pickaxe, so I can't even pick any of it up anyway. That is exactly the reason why we need to find some diamonds. Wait a second, we've made it to the new biome already? It definitely seems like the one chunk likes villages, because we've had an oak village, a spruce village, and now we have an acacia village. Now let's also make sure to try and get some acacia saplings while we're here. And before you guys start commenting about how you don't like acacia wood, listen, okay? It's really not that bad. Come on, I seriously can't be the only person that likes acacia wood. I mean, I probably am. Anyway, we finally have the acacia sapling, so let's keep on mining down the one chunk. There's not really too much to explore in this acacia village. Come on, diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Please be diamonds. There's gotta be diamonds here somewhere, and are you kidding me? Are we already at the next biome? Oh my, it's a mushroom biome. Another rare biome. And thankfully, this biome doesn't have anything too difficult because I can only see one skeleton. Now, there is a cave down here with some, oh, some lapis. Let's take all of this. This will come in very handy for when we need to enchant. Let's keep on exploring this cave. It seems like it goes a little bit deeper, and I mean- <gasps> Diamonds! It's about time. I've went through so many biomes. And hold on a second. We can see through here what the next biome is. Oh, it's an ocean monument. It took me a second to actually realize what it is because an ocean monument in one chunk just looks really weird. I mean, we will explore it, but for now, let's just mine up all of these diamonds. And now using these diamonds, we can craft a diamond pickaxe. And now we can head back up to the spruce biome to mine up some of this obsidian. There we go. We have 21 pieces of obsidian, so I think we can build a nether portal and also craft an enchantment table. So I'm gonna head back to my base because I have a bunch of stuff on me, and also we can probably work towards enchanting our stuff. Now, I've just thought of a good idea. Seeing as I'm passing through this village, I should probably just take the villagers back up to the top of the one chunk with me. So let me just make some more rails. This should hopefully be enough. All right, hop in. Okay, let's just build a staircase all the way up here. And then what we can do is place some rails down on the staircase we've just built. And now for the really annoying process of pushing this villager all the way to the top. Now, because I don't have a lot of rails, I'm just going to have to keep going back down and breaking them and just constantly reusing them over and over and over again. So I then spent the next few days getting these villagers all the way to the top of the one chunk. That was definitely one of the most painful things I've ever had to do, but the villagers are finally here. Now, I really want to give my villagers good trades, but I can't really do that if they're just walking around my one chunk. So what I'm going to do is plant some spruce trees, and now we can chop them down, and once we have enough wood, I'm going to build the villagers their very own trading area. All right, let's now use all of the spruce we've just collected to build the villager trading area. Okay. 
I finished building the villager area and this should be big enough for all of the villagers that I'm going to need. So let's bring the villagers over and somehow one of the villagers is already here and it has a job, a fisherman's job. I'm pretty sure it's getting this fisherman job from these barrels. So I guess one of our villagers is now going to be a fisherman. Anyway, let's get this villager inside of a minecart. Come on. Let's now bridge over to the villager area and use some rails to get this villager into their brand new home. So now that we have the villagers trapped, I have a genius idea of what we can do with them before we start trading with them. So seeing as the one chunk is extremely limited with the resources that you can get from it, I think a really good idea would be to build an iron farm because that way, if there's no iron left on the one chunk, we'll still be able to get an unlimited supply of it. So to even build an iron farm, we're going to need to breed these villagers. So let's start by heading down the one chunk to grab some beds. I can now bring the beds over in here and place them down. Now let's get some of this. All right, villagers, I've got you some food. Take some carrots and potatoes and start breeding. Yes, take a look at that there breeding. I probably shouldn't be looking at this. Yes, there we go. We have our first baby villager. Now the thing is we're going to need a lot more. So let's keep on getting these guys to breed. It's been a few days and now all of the villagers are grown up, which means we have enough to build the iron farm. So let's extend an area off to the side where we can fit space for this iron farm. Let's expand it out of dirt like this. So now that we have the space to build this farm, let's get to work. So let's head up eight blocks into the sky. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's now make a five by five platform. Now on top of this platform, we have to put down five beds just like this. Now let's build a wall all around this. Next up, let's surround all of these beds in some glass. Now we need to try and get our villagers inside of this iron farm. So let's build a little staircase down. All right, let's start pushing in the villagers. All right, they're all here. Let's just give them some food. Now to continue to make this farm, I need to make some chests and also three hoppers. So let's just go ahead and do that. And now I need to place the chest here with all of the hoppers pointing into the chest. And now I'm going to build the platform which the iron golems will actually spawn onto. Next up, let's build a three high platform all around this platform so no iron golems can escape. Let's now place down some signs and then put some water here so the iron golems will get pushed into the hopper. And now I need to put some lava here, but I don't have any. So I guess let's go and try to find some. The first place I'm going to try and check for lava is the ice spikes biome because the cave under there, I think might have had lava if I remember correctly. And it does. Perfect. Let's now finish this farm off by putting the lava bucket here and boom we have fully finished the iron farm so let's go ahead and clear all of this up let's also quickly make some ladders just so we can have an easy way to get up to this chest where the iron will drop into let's now wait up here for around about a day just to see if this farm will work I've been waiting for a while and it turns out one of the iron golems has spawned over there. So I think what I might have to do is make a ton of slabs and just cover this entire area with slabs because that way we can spawn proof all of this on the ground here. All right, hopefully this somehow works. Let's try again. Oh, yes, here we go. It's working. Now, I'm really glad that this farm works because right now I only have 15 iron. So now that this farm is working, we'll be able to get unlimited iron. And there we go. So while we leave this farm to do its thing, I think we should go ahead and start enchanting. If we have enchanted gear, we'll be able to explore the rest of the one chunk a lot more safer. So let's get everything we need for the enchantment table. I mean, we already have the obsidian on us. So let's grab the diamonds and also some leather. Let's head down to the crafting table and make ourselves a book. And just like this, we can make the enchantment table. Now that I have the enchantment table, I need to start getting some bookshelves so we can do some level 30 enchants. So I'm going to spend a few days just farming up all of this sugarcane. And whilst we're doing that, we'll also breed up all of our cows so we can get leather to make some books. It has taken us up until day 60, but we can now finally make all of the bookshelves that we need. And luckily for us, 23 bookshelves is more than enough. So let's now build a space to store this enchantment table. All right, let's enchant our pickaxe. Let's place our lapis in the enchantment table and see what we get. Fortune two and I'm breaking three. Okay, I kind of wanted efficiency. So we'll just have to make a grindstone and re-enchant the pickaxe. So let's place it here and take off these enchantments. And now let's hope we can get efficiency four. So let's just put that in here and oh wait, I'm not level 30. This is a bit of a problem. It looks like I'm gonna need some more XP. And I think I have just the idea of where we can get some. And that is going into the nether and mining quartz for XP. So let's light up the portal. I'm all ready to go inside the portal, but I'm super nervous us because I'm kind of scared that the nether is going to be in one chunk as well. And if it is, it's going to make things so much more difficult. So let's just head in and hope for the best. Okay. And it is one chunk as well. What the? Oh my, this is extremely weird. So right now we're in a crimson forest and up there, it looks like a warped forest maybe. And then we also have stuff down here. That looks like a basalt delta maybe. I know we came into the nether just to get quartz for XP, but I kind of want to explore and see what is around the nether. So let's start by heading up first. Come on. And okay. Yeah. 
yeah, it is a warped biome. Now, by the looks of things, there's one more biome up there. So let's go and see what it is. I'm starting to hear a lot of mobs up here, which is not good. Okay, we've made it up top, and there is only one hoglin, so if we can get rid of this, we might be okay. Oh, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, let's not panic. Let's also try and take out this hoglin. There we go. Let's see what's in this nether fortress. So we have some nether war, and it looks like some blazes are up there, which is good. This might be a blaze spawner, and wait, is it? Yep, that is definitely a blaze spawner. Oh wow, that is a lot of blazes. In fact, you know what? We don't even have diamond armor yet, and there's no reason for me to get blaze rods right now until we have to fight the ender dragon later. Right now, though, let's explore the rest of the biomes in the nether chunk. Okay, the next biome is an entire bastion. Okay, let's see what are in these chests, but really quickly, I should probably try and get rid of some of these magma cubes. All right, let's check it out. So in this chest, we have some gold, which is nice. And apart from that, nothing really too good. And in this chest, we have, ooh, a soul speed three book and oh my two pieces of netherite. All right, this loot was actually really, really good. Anyway, though, let's keep on moving down and see what we can find. I want to explore the whole nether chunk right now because we are really in need for some quartz. All right, let's be very careful going down this bastion. I don't really want to fight any piglins right now. And oh, would you look at that? We have already found the next biome and it is a soul sand valley. Okay, it doesn't really look like there's anything too interesting in this Soul Sand Valley. Let's just keep on moving down, I guess. Right, I'm interested to see what's down here, and it is a. Uh, oh, oh, um, what the? Uh, yeah, no. I'm not going down there. There's no way I'm going down there with just iron armor. We'll explore it later because I'm sure there's got to be something down there. For now, though, let's do what we came here for, and that was to mine up a bunch of quartz. I mined all of the quartz I could find, but I don't know if it's because we're in one chunk, but there just wasn't that much quartz. So I could only get to level 34. Oh, wait a second. I should have probably thought about this. Yeah, I forgot that this could happen. So let's just put some fences down so it doesn't happen again. And I'm also going to make a trap just to get rid of all of these piglins. So if we go ahead and hit one of them and make a run for it, they should all fall down here. I really hope. Otherwise, I'm going to die. Come on. Oh, yep. There they go. One by one, all the way down into the void. Yep. This is pretty genius if I do say so myself. Anyway, let's get to re-enchanting our pickaxe. So let's see what we can get. Please be efficiency. Okay, it's going to be efficiency, and it is... Oh, let's go. Almost the best enchantment we can get. Fortune 3, efficiency 4, and I'm breaking 3. That will do perfectly. And just to make this pickaxe even more overpowered so it doesn't break, let's get mending from these villagers. So let's make some villager workstations, and begin by turning some of the villagers into fletchers, which means we can trade sticks for emeralds, and then let's give this villager the librarian job. And now we just have to keep on breaking and placing the lectern until we get a mending book. Yeah, this is probably going to take some time. Time. Oh, wait. Uh, um, maybe not. Maybe we just get it like third try. That is the luckiest I have ever got with a villager. It's also only 12 emeralds, which is like super cheap. So I guess the next thing for us to do is chop down a bunch of trees so we can get sticks to buy emeralds and then buy the mending book. All right, I've got the sticks. So let's sell it to this guy right here for all of the emeralds. And then with these 12 emeralds, we'll go ahead and buy a mending book. And now to put this mending book on our pickaxe, we need an anvil. And seeing as we need iron, let's check how much iron our iron farm has been making us. So let's open up this and 44 pieces. That's a good amount of iron, so let's take it and craft ourselves an anvil. Boom. Let's put mending on this pickaxe and you know what? Let's also name it as well. This name should be perfect. Now we should probably go back to exploring the one chunk down there and see if we can make it all the way to the bottom. But before we do, just take a look at all of the progress we've made by day 70. I mean, this is what our one chunk looked like on day one and this is what it looks like now. But there's still a lot of days left, and there's so many building ideas I have that I want to get done before day 100. For now, though, let's get to the bottom of the one chunk. So let's mine through this mushroom biome, and yep, the ocean monument is right there. So let's dive in and explore. Let's try and find the entrance to this thing before we drown. Okay, I think the entrance might be down here. Okay, yeah, it is. Oh no, oh no, oh no, we're gonna drown. Let's just spam some torches. Okay, I don't think that's gonna work. I think we're gonna have to make some doors and use these for air pockets to breathe. Let's try that again. Let's go down to the entrance, and oh, there's guardians here. Let's take this one out. Come on. Oh no. Oh no. We're drowning as well. Come on. Okay, there we go. Let's put the door down for the air pocket. Okay, we're good. Now, I wonder if there's going to be an Elder Guardian in here. All right, let's head up and see. Now, what is in this place? We have nothing really around here. Maybe there's some stuff up here. Oh, okay. So there's some sponges even more sponges in here, but yet no sign of an Elder Guardian, which is good. And at the very top of the Ocean Monument, there are some gold blocks. This is perfect. I'll be taking these. All right, the only other place left to explore is all the way down here. So we have even more sponges. There is a lot of sponges in here. So I'm pretty sure that's the entire Ocean Monument biome explored. There's just a bunch of sponges, and more importantly, there was eight gold blocks. Now, I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but we might as well just take some of these sponges, seeing as they're here. So there we go. We've picked up some of the sponges. So let's continue down the one chunk and see what else we can find. 
diamond. We are getting really, really low, so hopefully we start finding some more diamonds soon. Okay, because we're in an ocean, we can swim down to the next biome, which seems to be a lush cave. And there's some diamonds right there. Oh no, oh no. <sighs> okay, let's maybe not get distracted by diamonds and try and take out all of these mobs. Now that all of the mobs are gone, let's light this up and, oh, an axolotl. Let's take it with us. I'm just gonna use my bow to get rid of all of these mobs down here. It's looking safe to jump down, so let's just go ahead and water bucket clutch with the axolotl. Okay, let's mine up these diamonds and our pickaxe does have fortune, so let's see how many we get. Okay, this is quite a big vein of diamonds and in total we have ourselves 18. Anyway, let's keep on going deeper into the one chunk and hopefully we'll come across some more diamonds. All right, and it is a mine shaft, I think. There's even some deep slate, which is a good sign that we are quite low. The only bad thing about being underground is that there is just so many mobs. So I'm guessing the biome that we're currently in is like a deep underground cave and also a mine shaft. Oh, diamonds. Okay, after mining these, we should definitely have enough for full diamond armor. But I also want to make full diamond tools. So let's keep the diamond luck up and hope we can find some more. And I think the best way that we're going to be able to find more diamonds is by going even more deeper into the one chunk. Okay, let's take a little peek around this corner and it's looking pretty safe, I think. Oh, I was wrong. Okay, you know what? It's actually not that bad. There's only one creeper and it looks like the skeletons back there are getting into their own fight. So we'll just leave them to it. I'm guessing one of the skeletons took out a creeper because there's a music disc. Anyway, let's mine these diamonds and we now have 48, which is way more than we need. All right, seems like there's another cave connected down here with some more lapis. Now, this is probably a bad idea, but I want to see what's at the bottom of the one chunk so badly that I'm just going to dig straight down. And apparently we just found some diamonds on the way. Anyway, back to digging straight down. Let's see what's down here. And oh, no way. We have found the stronghold. Now I'm guessing this is the bottom of the one chunk. And yep, it is. There's literally bedrock. We can't go any lower. So we have successfully made it to the bottom of the one chunk. Now I could have guessed that there was going to be a stronghold at the bottom of the one chunk. Now let's get rid of this. And there is two eyes already in the end portal, which means we need to get quite a few more. So I guess what we'll go ahead and start working on next is getting all of the eyes of Ender to go into the end. Anyway, we'll come back here when we are prepared to fight the Ender Dragon. But for now, let's head back up. Up to the top and craft ourselves full diamond tools and armor. All right, we have finally made it back to the surface. Wait, what? There's a whole entire pillager patrol on my one chunk. Wait, this is actually good because with these guys, I'll be able to start a raid. And during the raid, I'll be able to get my hands on a totem of undying, which would be really helpful. But the only thing is I have to take out the rest of these pillagers really quickly. So let's just try and do that. All right, come on, guys. Get off my one chunk, please. All right, let's head over to our villagers and start this raid. Okay, and oh, they have spawned in on top of my cow farm, which is actually quite good, really fun away from the villagers. I'm hoping this raid is super easy, but seeing as we're on one chunk, we don't have a lot of space. We only have one pillager left and he is right here. I'm really hoping we can get a totem in the next wave. Okay, the pillagers spawned over here again. Okay, these waves are really easy. Now, where is this last pillager? Is it over here? And wait, what happened to the raid bar? Wait, what happened to the raid? Um, okay, the raid has just stopped for some reason. I didn't even get to finish it. The only reason I think this may have happened is just because they might have not had anywhere to spawn on the one chunk. Yeah, I guess maybe it couldn't find a place for any of the pillagers to spawn, so it just decided to stop the raid. Which sucks because I really wanted to get a totem. In fact, the only thing that I actually got from this raid was one emerald. I mean, on the bright side, we can finally get around to crafting our full diamond armor. Let's throw away our old iron armor and put all of this on. Even on one chunk, we still managed to get full diamond armor. And not just diamond armor, we can also make full diamond tools. Now we are getting closer and closer to day 100, which means it is almost time to fight the ender dragon. So the next thing I'm going to do is enchant all of my diamond tools and armor. Now to be able to enchant everything, we're going to need a lot more XP. And mining quartz for XP is going to take us way too long. So the only other solution to get XP that I can think of is to build a basic mob farm. So Oh, I then spent the next few days grabbing all of the resources necessary to build a basic mob farm. This mob farm is not only super easy to build, but it will also generate us enough XP to be able to enchant all of our diamond armor and all of our diamond tools. Okay, I finished building the mob farm, and if we take a look here, it's definitely working. So let's keep on using it until we have enough XP to enchant all of our diamond armor and tools. I've been using the XP farm for quite some time, so let's go and enchant everything. Let's start by enchanting our armor, and these are all of the enchantments we got on our armor. Moving on to our sword. Oh, okay, that is really good. And on our shovel, we get a really good enchant. And moving on to our axe, we get just unbreaking. Okay, let's uh, maybe just re-enchant that really quickly. Unbreaking three again. Are you kidding me? Okay, it looks like I'm breaking three is gonna have to do for now because I want to enchant my bow. So let's see what we get. And what is it with unbreaking three today? Okay, finally. And now on our bow, we have power four, unbreaking three, and flame. All right, we now have level 30 enchants on all of our armor and all of our tools. Now we do have a few spare days left until we have to start preparation for fighting the ender dragon. So what I'm gonna spend the next few days on is making our one chunk look a little bit more interesting. I mean, I do like how it's looking now, but I kind of want to build something to show that we have explored all of the biomes in this one chunk. 
one. So I'm thinking right over there in the sky, we build a giant floating island, and I want to build it by using a block from every single chunk. Yeah, so this build is going to be quite big, so let's head down and begin gathering all the blocks we're going to need. So the plan that I have in mind to build this giant floating island is that it will have different layers to represent each different biome of the one chunk. So we'll start by gathering a bunch of blocks from the desert biome. Next up, we'll silk touch a bunch of packed ice and also some snow blocks. I'll now move down to the Badlands biome to collect some terracotta. Moving on, we'll grab a bunch of this mycelium and we'll finish off by grabbing a bunch of prismarine blocks, moss blocks. Now let's get the last block we need, which is deep slate. All right, so let's go ahead and start building a bridge out to where I want to start building this island. Now this floating island is going to be quite big, so I'm thinking maybe over here is a good spot to build it. Yeah, I think right here is a perfect spot, so let's just get to work. <laughs> Let's now add the final touches to this build by placing down some mushrooms. And just like that, the floating island build is complete. So there we go. It has all of the different blocks and this thing is looking so cool. But building this took a little bit longer than expected and we are now running out of time to try and fight the ender dragon. So let's just quickly speed run everything we need to get into the end. The first thing I'm going to try and get my hands on is some ender pearls and we were able to get some gold from an ocean monument earlier. So hopefully we can trade all of this gold with a piglin. All right, we found some piglins. So let's give them all of this gold. It's not looking like there's any ender pearls down there yet, so let's just keep on waiting. Okay, the pig has used all of our gold, and I do see some ender pearls down there. So let's see how many it is, and it's only four. I mean, it's better than nothing, but now I'm thinking the next best way of getting ender pearls is taking out all of these endermen in this warped forest. Now, the bad thing about doing this is that our sword doesn't have looting, so we're just gonna have to hope we get lucky just like we did then. All right, come on, endermen, let's take all of you out. All right, we're actually getting pretty lucky. We only need three more ender pearls. All right, only two more, and now only one more. Okay, Enderman, drop us the last Ender Pearl we need, please. And yes. All right, now we have 10 Ender Pearls. Let's head up to the top of the chunk to get some Blaze Rods. All right, let's turn these blaze rods into blaze powder and then combine the blaze powder with these ender pearls to get 10 eyes of ender. So we now have enough eyes of ender to go into the end portal, but there's one last piece of preparation I want to do before fighting the dragon, and that is to go all the way down to the bottom of the one chunk to find enough ancient debris to upgrade all of my armor. All right, here we go. We're all the way down at the bottom of the nether chunk, so let's just quickly jump down and mine down here, and let's start mining around for some ancient debris. And talking of ancient debris, we've already found some. And luckily for us, finding ancient debris shouldn't be too hard because our pickaxe can mine extremely fast. And I mean, look at that. We've already found another three vein of ancient debris. And what the? There's just another two pieces here. So, so far we have 12 pieces of ancient debris. So we only need a few more. And this should be the last piece that we need. So let's smelt it all up. And while it's smelting, we'll make ourselves a smithing table. Boom. Let's now turn this into actual netherite. And now let's go through and upgrade everything. And we'll also upgrade our pickaxe and our sword. All right, there we go. I think we are now ready to go and fight the ender dragon. Now, if I somehow don't defeat the ender dragon, I'm really going to miss everything that we've done in this 100 days so far. Anyway, with that being said, let's head to the stronghold. All right, we've made it to the stronghold, so let's go ahead and place all of our eyes of ender inside the portal frames, and here we go. I think I've got everything I need, so let's do this. All right, here we are. Let's build up with some of our wood. And where is the dragon? Okay, it's over there. And we'll start by taking out all of the end crystals. All right, let's try and hit this one up there. Come on. Perfect. All right, my accuracy is pretty good right now. We only have a few more end crystals left. Okay, come on. This one has to hit... There we go. All right, there we go. That's all of the end crystals apart from this one over there. Let's try and hit this. It's really far away. This might be a bit hard. Oh, I think we got it. Okay, let's head all the way down here. And oh my, the dragon just hit us out the way. It's all good though. Let's just start shooting the ender dragon with our arrows. Okay, the dragon's perching. So let's get in position really quickly. And let's start hitting its head. And look at the amount of damage we're doing. Oh my. The dragon is now under half health. Okay, and it's perching again. So let's get back down here. Now, I think we should be able to finish it right here. Come on. Let's keep on going. Please, any minute now. And... And yes, there we go. Now give me all of this XP and let's even go ahead and collect the ender dragon egg. Let's now head back to our one chunk and let's go ahead and place the ender dragon egg right in our house. But anyway, we have done it. We have successfully survived 100 days on one chunk. Thanks again to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link down below and use the gift code to claim your rewards.